Hi there. Please excuse my attire, but it is very cold in the garage. Uh, I just want to do a series of videos on a project that I've been working on. I've managed to acquire this old dot matrix printer. It's an HP. Uh, and I have this little Arduino. And I want to be able to print things from the Arduino onto this printer. Uh, it's it's a pretty old printer. Uh, it's from 1984. So it's got some very simple interfacing. It's uh, interfaced with the good old parallel printer port. Uh, first things first, I'm going to take a look at the innards of the printer and try and understand a bit more on how it works. So here we have the innards of the printer. The first thing uh, I noticed when pulling it apart is the size of this massive transformer here. Uh, it generates three voltages, uh, 5, 12 and 24. So 24 runs the step motors, uh, 5 is of course the logic, and then 12 is apparently for optional interfaces, so I'm not sure exactly what they mean, but uh, when I got this printer it did have a board mounted over top here that was for an, uh, an optional interface to another style of computer, I think it was to a 4-bit computer, so there needed to be additional buffering done to get an 8-bit interface up. In terms of getting a manual for this printer to try and find out more about how it worked, I of course started by looking uh, for an HP manual because it is listed as an HP printer, but I uh, didn't have much success. I found an owner's manual but it didn't go into great detail of exactly how everything worked in here, but then noticing that the board is an Epson and the cartridge is an Epson, I found out that the this printer is uh, almost exactly the same in design as an Epson 80 and as you see since the board is made by Epson the uh, interchangeability is really high so I found an Epson 80 manual that kind of went into a lot more detail. Now the level of understanding is still quite basic but at least it gives a few ideas of what some of the uh, some of the chips do. Yeah it gave me the voltages what the step motors were for, and a lot of little details like that. So interestingly enough, this is runs off uh, two CPUs. This one here is the master CPU, and then this one here is the slave CPU. These two C CPUs don't run at the same speed. The master runs at 10 megahertz, and the slave runs at 11 megahertz. Now, of course, they do have to be in communication with each other, and from what I understand, that's done through these chips in this area, and especially this one which is a, a data buffer. Another interesting detail is that this slave CPU takes care of all of the head movements of the printer, moving the print head back and forth uh, using what they refer to as the carriage step motor, which is this one. These two chips up here are the ROM chips, which hold the program for the printer and how the printer is going to operate. Interestingly enough, with this CPU in here uh, and some configurations, uh, again, this is according to the manual. One of these uh, ROM chips could actually be removed because this uh, CPU has some internal ROM that could be loaded with the print program if so required, and which was done so by the factory. So I'm guessing this uh, this exact printer here is is just using the external ROM for b both the programs. If uh, the CPU was a 7810, then that CPU would not have any internal ROM. And, so the external ROM would be used in its entirety. Up here we see two 74 series chips, which are actually two asynchronous buffers that are uh, signaled by the strobe signal that's coming from the control computer. So they appear to be the input data buffers. So they'll take the 8-bit data bus and latch it when the strobe signal is toggled. And then once that has occurred, the CPUs can read the data at their own speed. Now, as one would expect with a printer of this age, there's many setups that are reminiscent of typewriters. For instance, this latch here is a paper release. So you can insert a fresh piece of paper and then lock it into place. Uh, there's also tab settings here. You can shift to adjust the size of the paper. And also this sort of small lever here moves the print head slightly back and forth on an eccentric shaft, just bringing it closer and further away from the paper. I'm assuming that would be some sort of print intensity setting. Having it very close would mean a very high impact to the paper, and having it farther away would lessen that impact. So that might be something to play with. At the bottom here is the big ribbon cartridge. So of course this does print using a ribbon, just like a typewriter would as well. And it, can, it can be extracted just by lifting it up. 
this here is the print head itself with a lot of cooling so that will be moving back and forth on this belt driven by this step motor this step motor here advances the line the step motors themselves are SME 040s as you can see written on the top there which are actually made by Epson for this printer and I'm, I'm assuming they use them in other printers as well but interestingly they're unipolar so you can see there's six wires exiting them in two sets of three so there's probably two rotors stacked on top of each other and they advance uh, 7.5 degrees per tick which I think is pretty interesting because I've never actually played with a step motor that hasn't been 1.8 degrees. I just wanted to flip the camera around here to get a nice nifty view of this bank of transistors here which I could only assume are driving either aspects of the print head or are driving the step motors so there's nine of there in total and I think they tap directly into this or some of them tap directly into this which runs to the print head and the other ones run to the step motors through this wire here so that's a pretty rushed overview of the hardware of the printer uh, in the next video we're going to look at how to exactly interface with this and construct a small interface board, this one that will allow the Arduino to talk to the pins on the printer